uh, this is going to be determining frequency with an analog oscilloscope. Okay, so that's the the beautiful old Tektronics RM503 oscilloscope, and as you can see, it's displaying a triangle wave, and that triangle wave is coming from the Interstate F43 over there, and. Um, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to determine frequency using an analog oscilloscope. Now, of course, frequency is measured in cycles of the waveform per second. And that is cycles divided by seconds. And we call that unit Hertz after this guy named Hertz, who actually discovered radio waves right about the same time Tesla was working with radio waves. So it may be confusing when we say, well, the frequency is one kilohertz, but really what we're saying is the frequency is 1,000 cycles of the waveform per second. Okay, And the way that you determine the frequency in hertz is you just count the number of cycles of the waveform and divide that, since per means divide, you divide that by the number of seconds and you wind up with your answer as the frequency in Hertz cycles per second okay so I'm going to show you how to do that on the old uh, Tektronics 503 here well anybody who has an analog oscilloscope knows that the time base control has a vernier knob on it and somewhere over on the end it's got a little calibration switch but then if you turn that knob you can basically make the waveform look, you know, however fast or slow you want, right? Well, okay, so what does that mean? That means that you have to have some frequency standard in order to calibrate or adjust your scope's time base so that it will read accurately when you go to read an unknown frequency, right? Okay, so what I have here, I don't know if you can see that or not, this is a Philips PM 6676 universal frequency counter okay and inside that Philips frequency counter there's a little crystal oscillator that is actually in an oven so whenever the unit is is turned it, whenever it's plugged in that oven is keeping that little crystal oscillating and at the correct temperature so that it's stable you'll notice that it doesn't even have an off button it just has an on and a standby when it's on standby, the oven is on, keeping the oscillator oscillating and keeping it stable. Now, there's a self-check function here. If I push that self-check function, it's reading the frequency of the oscillator, which should be precisely 10 kilohertz. And that is what it says. So it passes its internal self-check. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to reading the live signal coming over the A channel. So what I've done is I've very carefully set the interstate to produce a 1,000 hertz signal as close as I could get it. Uh, and so since I'm reading that on this very, very accurate Philips frequency counter with its own built-in frequency standard, I know that I've got a 1,000 hertz signal going in to the oscilloscope, right? So. 1000 Hertz, if I work this formula backwards, 1000 Hertz then is one cycle per 1000th of a second, right? So one cycle per millisecond would be 1000 Hertz. So now I go back up here and I note that I have my time base set at one millisecond per centimeter and each one of those lines going across here the ver uh, vertical lines is one centimeter, right? So what I do is I use the horizontal position control to set one of those peaks right at the beginning of the gradical. And now I know that I want 10 peaks to happen in 10 milliseconds, right? So I go, and this gradical is 10 centimeters wide, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I go to the vernier on the sweep time and I adjust it so that there are precisely 10 peaks in 10 centimeters, right? 
So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 peaks in 10 milliseconds. And by doing this formula here, 10 cycles divided by 10 milliseconds, I wind up with 1000 hertz. So now I have my oscilloscope's time base set to a known external standard. And now I can go and measure my unknown frequency. Now normally, when you display a signal on an oscilloscope, you're looking at the signal waveform itself. So you only want to display a few cycles so that you can really see the details and where the zero crossings are. But when you're determining frequency, it's just the opposite. You want, for accuracy, you want as many wave as many cycles of that waveform as you can comfortably read on there so that your frequency determination will be accurate. So what I've done is I've just randomly spun the dial on the F43 to give us a random frequency and now let's see if we can compute what it is. So when you're looking at a random frequency I like to use the center 8 radical markers. I don't like to use the full scale because there may be some distortion over on the ends, right? So we use the, again, we use the horizontal position control to move one of those peaks, ah, autofocus, move one of those peaks to where it's right on the second radical marker. Okay, right there. Right there. And now we count peaks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, <coughs> excuse me, 21 and just a hair, let's call it 21.2 to that eighth radical marker there. Okay, so now let's do some math. We know that we have 21.2 cycles in eight milliseconds, right? So moving to the calculator, we go 21.2, which is the number of cycles, divided by 0 .008, which is 8 milliseconds, the time interval, and that gives us 2650 hertz, or cycles per second, right? So let's see what the frequency counter says. 2688. That's not bad. That's pretty close. So that's about, uh, let's see, what were we? We're off by 30 out of, so that's a, that's a little bit, uh, a little bit over 1% error in our determination of frequency from the oscilloscope screen. Okay? So that's pretty good. So you count the number of cycles and you divide it by the number of seconds and that gives you the frequency in Hertz. But first, you have to have your horizontal time base set to some known standard, which you can do by setting your function generator to some known wavelength using its own counter, or most oscilloscopes will also have an internal frequency standard, but you don't know that you can trust that until you've compared it to an external frequency standard. Okay, thank you for watching.